Midsummer 1967. Six young men are two miles into Mossdale Caverns, heading for the southern end of the known cave, where they intend to blast and find new passages. They laugh, they tease each other, until the water starts surging. The weather has changed, and Mossdale Bag turned into a raging torrent, completely flooding the entrance series and much of the cave with tragic results. The six young men, ranging in age from 17 to 26, drowned. Mossdale's notorious reputation daunted most cavers since its first exploration by Iron Man Bob Leakey, a British caving's living legend who died on April 22, 2013. On May 31, 1941, searching for his pipe which had fallen from his mouth into the ruckle of boulders beneath Mosstail Scar, Bob found the way into the stream passage beyond the scar. The caverns can be considered as two caves in one, located in the Yorkshire Dales in England. Entered down through a crevice, the accessible passages wind for six and a half miles or ten and a half kilometers, and the shallow beds of Yordale limestone are often only inches high. Yet, most of the stream flowing into the cave disappears near the only entrance at the foot of Mossdale Scar into impenetrable rocks. It reappears 2.7 miles or 4.4 kilometers away and about 740 feet lower, at a pool called Black Keld by the River Wharf. The unexplored cave between the two points could be one of the deepest and longest in Britain. Classed as super severe, the cave system has a reputation as one of the toughest underground challenges in Britain, prone to complete flooding with nowhere to escape to. Jim Eyre, Another caving patriarch said that Marsdale was the one cave, a death trap in waiting, he would never go near. Ironically, in 1967, he found himself leading the perilous main rescue attempt. Most cavers descend into the abundance of caves with the goal of bottoming the cave and returning to the surface. For others, the appeal of caving is to dig, dive or blast either in existing known caves or on the fells with the intention of discovering unknown passages or previously undiscovered caves. The six cavers who lost their lives in Mossdale Caverns in 1967 were unquestionably amongst the second group. On Saturday 24th June 1967, at 2.30 in the afternoon, a team of ten young cavers, eight men and two women, led by 26-year-old Dave Adamson, entered Marsdale Caverns near Grassington. They were all experienced cavers and knew the risks. They split into two separate groups before going into the cave. The first group with Colette Lord, James Cunningham, John Shepard and Morag Forbes, intended only to go part way in as far as rough chamber taking about 40 minutes. The other six, however, continued on their quest to go to the extreme end of the known cave in order to use dynamite to remove a blockage that had prevented further progress for a number of years. The first group exited the cave at 5pm. Cunningham and Shepard drove Colette back to Ingleton. Edison's six were not due before midnight. Morag sheltered in a barn at Howjill Nick waiting for her fiancé Adamson and his friends to return. When rainfall became heavier, one inch of rain fell in three hours. She checked the cave entrance twice and was alarmed when she found Marsdale Bag in full spate and the cave entrance flooded. She ran three miles across the moorland to Yarnbury Farm where Farmer Riley called the police. One call went to the Martin Arms near Ingleton, where Cunningham and Shepard, oblivious to the Mossdale storm, were enjoying a pint. Grabbing still wet caving gear, they hurried to the cave they had exited only hours before. The scene was horrific. Mossdale was a lake, the cave underwater. 
By 10 past 11 p.m., over 300 people joined the rescue attempts of the members from the Upper Wharfdale Fell Rescue Association and their colleagues from the CAFE Rescue Organization. Fire service pumps were used to lower the water levels, hundreds shoveled, many using their bare hands to dig a diversion ditch six feet wide, ten feet deep, and 100 yards long to build a 10 feet dam. It was shaky, unstable, later reinforced by 10,000 sandbags. But created in one morning, it was virtually a miracle, a race against time that many dedicated diggers believed already was lost. By late Sunday morning, held by 19 fire pumps, the water was falling and the rescuers were able to get into the cave. They heard distant, echoing voices, a telltale splash of water, and as the water slowly sank, Tony Waltham, a London-based wanderer, found the first two bodies in the far marathon crawl, a long 10-inch high section of the system. It was a nightmare to crawl over them, he said. Shortly after, he found three more. As the dam started to tremble, all rescuers had to retreat to the surface hoping that the missing John Ogden would still be alive. On the early Monday morning, 53-year-old Bob Leakey led another team down the cave far beyond, but was forced to retreat as a dam was about to bulge. At 10 p.m. on Tuesday 29th, Ogden's friend Brian Boardman led a weary six-man team on a final attempt. They found John Ogden's body in a narrow fissure close to his five colleagues. The six victims of Britain's worst caving tragedy are 17-year-old Michael Ryan, 19-year-old Bill Frakes, 21-year-old John Ogden, 23-year-old Colin Vickers, 24-year-old Jeff Buero, and 26-year-old Dave Adamson all perished in the caves, 450 meters up on the watershed between Wharfdale and Nidderdale. Len Huff, one of the leaders of the rescue attempt said, their luck just ran out. The weather changes quickly in this part of the world. Colin Vickers left behind a 18 months old daughter named Rachel Taylor, who now aged 55. She had a deep desire to go to the cave to see where her father had died. It's about wanting to know what it's like to be in a cave. I'm taken into the pothole and I'm terrified, but then reassured by a voice I believe is my father saying, Hello Rachel, it's me. Coroner Stephen Brown returned a verdict of misadventure and ordered the cave to be sealed and respected as a grave. Reaching the corpses took five hours crawling. Any attempt at bringing them to the surface ruled too risky. The six men's bodies remained where they had been found for three years until 1970, when a group of friends broke through the seal and moved them to a blindside passage of the northern arm of the high-level mud caverns, which they named the Sanctuary. A funeral service was held in Coniston Church, and a plaque now marks the place where British caving's darkest day occurred.